So this talk has um, actually originated as a result of Java developers coming to me and talking to me about why they weren't seeing any um, other women or not too many other women attending Java developer conferences and they asked me what could be done to change this. Um, and I was really something I never gave too much thought to, but um, as a result of their prompting, I did go ahead and develop this talk, which is the top 10 ways to ally for women in tech, but actually I've given this talk a couple of times as well. It really applies to any type of diversity, not just um, to ways to help women. And women can do this to help themselves, and women can do this to help each other, and you can do this to help anyone who maybe isn't um, as represented in technology as we see um, when we look around the room. Um, so I just put a few stats together just because, like I said, more for my edification than anything. But um, when I did start to think about this issue, I found that there's actually um, a gender gap in almost anything that you look, you look at outside of just, of course, the population. Women make up about half the population, but there's a gap in almost any other area of, of life, and that is all around the world from number of women working in tech, to the number of women who are CEOs, to the number of billionaires, um, to how much money's being made, um, you know, women are paid less. Um, yet what was interesting is I looked at some of the research and it shows that teams that are diverse, so teams that have multiple different types of people, men and women, people from different backgrounds, are actually more profitable. Um, they're actually more intelligent, so their collective IQ rises, meaning they create better, more innovative and creative solutions, um, having a diverse team. So there's actually a positive financial impact. It's not only um, the right thing to do, it's the smart and more profitable thing to do, which I thought was really interesting. And I also like to start off the talk by saying this is not necessarily a topic I really like to talk about, but what I found is that I get more and more demand for this talk. I've given this talk in six different continents. Um, I didn't count the countries, um, but I've given this talk all over the world as a keynote talk as well as um, in um, companies um, all over the world. Um, and I think this, I always keep this um, quote in mind, which is she who is brave is free, so. I think it's an important to topic to talk about. I think I came into technology over 20 years ago thinking that if I just put my head down and worked hard, I would be recognized because there's this pervasive p belief in technology that it's a meritocracy and that it's code and it's um, black and white. So whatever um, happens as a result of that, you're gonna be recognized and that is not, what I found out is that that is not the case, that working hard is not all it takes, that you have to do lots of other things. Like for instance, in my career, what I found was putting my head down and, find, and thinking I'm gonna get recognized is not necessarily what it takes. Um, you have to be excellent at your job in order to survive, but if you wanna thrive, you need to be looking at ways to expand your network, increase your influence, um, and also um, increase your visibility. Um, so I think that's really key to recognize. And then um, the other thing that I like to um, point out is that for this particular talk, I'm just, I'm not gonna talk about getting girls into STEM or how we might do that or what impact it might make, but just focus exclusively on, you know, people who are here in the workplace now. Um, how can we keep them here? How can we attract more of them? Um, so I like, I put it into these 10 tips and the first of them being a mindset. So um, often what I found when I started to pay attention to this space, because really when I started over 20 years ago, I hardly recognized that I was one of the only women. It really had to be pointed out to me because I was putting my head down and doing my work. Um, but when I started to take you know, a collective look at this space of, oh, why aren't there more women and we need more diversity, what I found was a lot of people are doing a lot of talking, um, but a lot of people you know, aren't thinking about what they can do. And I really feel like we can make an impact by thinking about the things that we can do, maybe small things um, and, th and starting with a mindset. So think of ally. So if you, a lot of people say, I am an ally for diversity or for women in tech, but think, start thinking of ally as a thing that you do sometimes. Um, so a thing you do, think of it as a verb. 
And when you're thinking of that, also what I found is that since this is a little bit of an uncomfortable topic for some people, um, be really simple, kind, and straightforward. Um, oftentimes when people get uncomfortable, they try to use like sarcasm or humor. And I think in this particular case, while I always enjoy a good joke and I, I love to laugh and have a good time, I think that you know just being direct and pointing things out in a simple and in a kind way when you do recognize things that are going wrong because because people do make mistakes in this area um, with good intentions often, sometimes not. Um, but you know, point those things out and recognize that everyone's gonna make mistakes. So especially if you're you know, trying to start taking some actions to affect change in this space, you probably will make some mistakes and that's okay. And we should all recognize that that is going to happen. So getting into some of the things that you can do, um, what I've recognized um, as I started to take an assessment in this area is that assignment distribution is a really big thing. Um, so there's there tends to be in any job housework and real work, and if you look at technical roles um, specifically, um, oftentimes what I've noticed in the teams that I interact with is that technical women on the team will often take on a lot of the more housework in the team versus um, some of the um, more um, technical work like owning and writing the code. So in other words, um, picking up some of the administrative tasks that the whole team will need to do. Oftentimes that will be designated um, to the woman on the team. So what I like to make people aware of is the fact that um, you need to be, as a woman, making sure that you're not always doing those things, but men on the team can also take stock in that and make sure that that's evenly distributed. For instance, one of the things that I often do, like even cleaning up in a meeting room, I um, chair executive meetings for the JCP executive committee, and oftentimes I'll notice that you know people don't clean up after themselves. I'll often point out and designate someone to do that, so it's not left to one of the few women in the room. So that's one thing for administrative tasks or even like calendar assignments. Make sure you're rotating that, but also look at um, how the work in the teams being distributed, the high-profile assignments, like I talked about, increasing visibility. You know that's one of the ways that um, people get recognized and move forward and advance in their career. Um, so make sure that when those high profile um, assignments come up, um, that the people who are getting assigned to them are not always the person who's similar to you. Um, so you need to be sure that the projects that um, people on the team are taking on are projects that are going to be recognized as high value. So for me, myself, I always take a look a couple levels of ahead or above me in terms of what do those people care about? What are the assignments that I can volunteer for um, that are going to get me that visibility um, across the company that are going to help me to advance? So take a look at it around your team and make sure that those assignments are getting evenly distributed in that way. Um, friendly environment, uh, that I think is one of the most important things. So obviously birds of a feather flock together. I think that's why oftentimes at conferences, um, being a, a speaker at conferences, I always see it's birds of a feather session, which means you're going to with people who are similar to you. And that is human nature. Um, but I think what we can do to increase diversity in the technical space um, is to look at ways that you can make it a friendly environment for all different types of people because as it is, um, the stats that I found were that 41% of women who start in, in a tech field actually leave after 10 years where that stat for men is more like 17%. Um, so when I look at that, I think there's something in the environment that is, is forcing people out. I, I did see a couple studies that talk about the reason and while um, direct uh, sexism or favor, um, harassment is you know one of the reasons, it's not the top reason, one of the top reasons is is that uh, women don't feel like they're getting the assignments that they need or they're not um, being um, promoted or advanced or they don't feel like they belong. Um, so being the promoted and advanced, that goes back to my last tip, right? Making sure that um, people on the team are getting those assignments that are seen as high profile, um, but also a friendly environment. So what I found is that 
Oftentimes, some of the informal social activities are at times or doing activities that not everyone on the team will want to participate in. And oftentimes, missing out on those informal activities are what makes people maybe feel like they're not quite part of the team. So look at different activities that you can have and take a um, survey and see what, what types of activities people would like to participate in. More lunchtime activities are really key because everyone's there. I know that you do that here, so that's great. I think that's an awesome thing to do. Um, but oftentimes it'll be evening or maybe always focused around like going out for a beer or something like that. Um, so make sure that you're incorporating different activities that everyone on the team is participating in. If you're not seeing a balance of people um, from the team participating, look at ways that you can include them more often. Um, and also in informal talks, you know, make sure that you're talking, to, focusing on people's work. Sometimes um, men have told me they're just not sure what to talk about, so they'll default to how they relate to someone who's like that person. So like for instance, with a woman, you know, relating them to their mom or their sister or their spouse and talking about you know, things around that. Try to just focus on the work um, if to make them feel welcome. And that's especially important at conferences. So lots of women that I talk to who go to conferences say they get talked to about you know, only their kids or how they balance work and family. And that's kind of pointing out to some women, making them uncomfortable thinking like, maybe I don't belong here, like I should be back in the home environment. So I think that's something that maybe some people do with good intentions that can actually have a negative result. So think about that. Uh, speaking up. So speaking up um, in meetings, in forums, at conferences. And this, um, top, this tip I put into the category that you can think of that I've seen often and actually research backs it that women often get interrupted um, and oftentimes ideas that they put forward in a meeting will fall flat or um, they don't participate in the meeting because they're not really sure um, or feel comfortable to participate. So those three things happen. So there's something that allies can do in each of those situations. Um, so for instance, if a woman makes a suggestion and it kind of falls flat, um, there's no reaction or response, or maybe if someone else in the room makes a similar idea and claims credit for it, what you can do is amplify. Um, when the suggestion is first made, what that means is like call out that person by name saying, oh, that's a great idea that you just put forward, um, Jessica, for instance, um, and then ask a clarifying question or add something on top of it. So that can amplify it. So that helps in those situations maybe where People didn't necessarily hear what was being said. There's actually been studies that suggest that there's some you know, tones that certain types of people don't hear. So amplifying is a, an ally step that you can take right there. Also, you can draw out suggestions for people who aren't participating. So going back to what I talked about in terms of diverse teams and their effectiveness, obviously you're not gonna get that diverse perspective if everyone on the team isn't participating. So look, at see, look and see what you can do to bring out suggestions from people without necessarily putting them on the spot, unless you've talked to them in advance about that, um, that you're gonna put them on the spot. But maybe make a suggestion of something that person has said, or talk to them in advance, and encourage them to participate. And then the third thing I talked about in terms of the interruptions, um, and this is one that I get more often um, than the other two, because um, I tend to be just a little bit more loud or, uh, participative in meetings, I guess you could say. Uh, <laughs> but I do get the interrupting quite a bit, and people have actually commented on that to me when I lead meetings, that I'm often interrupted. Um, and and there have been studies that say that women get interrupted three times more often than men. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but I've, I've seen a study about that. It does happen, so you can also step in in those cases. Often I do this for myself, so you can do it either way. So if I do it for myself, I'll be like, I wasn't quite finished yet, let me finish, and then I wanna hear what you have to say. Um, but if you wanna step in and do it for someone else, which I suggest is great, because that kind of you know puts a little extra burden on me to have to do it for myself, right? I don't think Heather was finished yet, can we hear what she has to say before we hear what you have to say? So that's a really helpful thing that can be powerful in a meeting. So the amplification as well as the, you know, calling that out and speaking up um, when people are interrupted in a meeting. 
um, that's really helpful. Also in discussions um, at, at a conference, also this can happen in forums too, if, um, online forums or in mail chains, uh, if people's ideas are being um, ignored or if someone's suggesting an idea that was already put forward, you can also step in and say, oh, that's really similar to something that this person said back whenever it was and giving credit to the person who makes that suggestion. It's a really powerful thing to do. Okay, number six. Um, so intervene is a little bit different than speaking up. So speaking up, I like to think of as, you know, a little bit different in terms of interrupting or taking credit for ideas or drawing out participation from everyone on in the group. Um, intervene is more about those difficult situations that we all know happen. Now, personally, myself, I haven't had a lot of experience with these, but since I started giving this talk, just people have come forward and shared with me lots of different stories of you know, things that happen to them in the workplace and at conferences, especially um, in after hours, people seem to be you know, prone to behave badly. Um, but I think uh, that intervening is something that men can do and that doesn't happen often enough, often because you know people in general don't like confrontation. Um, um, but I think if you intervene in an, you know, a different kind of way, it can be really effective. So for instance, you know, pay attention to the conversations that are happening. If you see something that's inappropriate or even that's just making someone else uncomfortable, step in and um, it can be just as simple as redirecting the conversation um, or the situation or suggesting moving away from the situation. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a full blown um, conflict, I guess you could say. I mean, some situations may call for that, and I think you know you have to be willing to evaluate that on a case-by-case -case basis, but um, I think what I've found in talking to a lot of the men that I work with is that oftentimes um, it's easy to just say, well, I don't personally do this, and you know, not necessarily get involved and speak up when you see inappropriate things. Um, so this can be a very um, effective and powerful thing to do, intervening, stepping in, and saying something. Um, so it's not enough um, to just not participate in the activity, but actively, actively get involved. Number seven, uh, character trait assignment. Um, so be aware of character trait assignment. And this one also I have more experience with um, for myself. So there are certain personality characteristics that are more often attributed to women than to men. Um, and usually this is in a negative way. So um, being aware in yourself um, when you're thinking these thoughts about other people and their behavior, as well as when you hear people saying it. So I have a particular example here. Um, and this one comes you know, from my personal experience, abrasiveness, right? So abrasive is just a word that you often hear applied to women, but not so often to men. And I actually found this study um, from performance reviews. And, and what it found in this particular study was that abrasive is a, a word that was used to describe many different women's behavior, but not a word applied to any men's reviews. Um, so that's that's one I particularly find and that I've you know had the experience with in terms of, oh, you know, she's just cold and abrasive, right? Where I found, I think, I think of myself as a friendly, you know, and welcoming person. Um, maybe a little bit, you know, more um, straightforward than the next, but not necessarily abrasive. So there's this situation that women often find themselves in where they have to be kind of, I say, it's like walking a tightrope, right? So you can't be too feminine because then you're not effective and you can't be too masculine because then you're not really likable. So you have to you know, try to find this balance in terms of behavior that's acceptable. So what I say is the ally step you can do is just think, recognize it in yourself when you're thinking about someone's behavior um, in terms of what you're calling it in your head or when you hear people saying it, oh, she's so aggressive, oh, she's so abrasive. Um, or cold or whatever the word is, would, what would you say if that was someone else, if it was yourself? Would you say that they were a strong and independent leader, for instance, or would you say they were aggressive and abrasive? So recognizing that and renaming it can be really effective. Um, prove it and prove it again is um, something that I'm gonna come to, I actually am gonna talk about that on my next tip, tip number, number eight which is encouraging norms. Encouraging norms um, that um, provide a level playing field and going back to 
proving it and proving it again. There's certain norms that we have in our society and prove it and prove it again is one of them that especially applies to hiring and promotions. So there's um, this concept that women and women do this internally. I think I see this when I suggest people to be promoted all the time. They feel like they have to prove that they've done something in order to do a job. So they have to have done this already in advance before they get hired for a job to do it, where what you see more often with men is they get hired based on their potential. Um, so it's more about proof for women and potential for men. Um, so I think recognizing that and calling it out can be a norm that um, encourages more of that self-promotion and that that is essential to succeed in technology. You have to be willing to self-promote and also when you see um, descriptions for jobs, um, I, this is where I found this particularly coming into play. If I suggest someone apply for a job, um, what I found is that um, when, I, when I tell a man about this job, he'll say, maybe he has one thing on the list in the description. And he'll say, yeah, I, I definitely can do that. I will apply for the job. If I show that same description to a woman who's just as qualified, oftentimes the response she gives to me is, I haven't done this, that, and the other thing, so I won't even apply. Um, so I think it's important to, what we can do if you're a hiring manager is look at your job descriptions and take out anything that you don't actually require. Um, so that means that your job description might be a lot shorter um, because oftentimes that's what's gonna happen is you're gonna see more men applying for that job than women. Um, so I've seen some success with people who, who are saying they're not getting enough women candidates um, just by do, making those simple changes in their job descriptions, also in the, the phrases they put into those job descriptions. And this I think applies more to like a startup environment in terms of I'm looking for a rock star programmer coding ninja type of thing. Um, that has you know some things in there that might not apply to all different types of people, right? Um, so look at things that you can take out in that way of job descriptions. And then also when you're, when you're talking amongst um, your teams, self-promotion and negotiation, encourage those as norms. I think those are unspoken norms um, in hiring and promotions um, that you would have to promote your own work. Um, women are often socialized to not do that. And it's a lot easier for them to recognize the team and oftentimes you know, are thought that, that back, back to putting your head down and doing good work and it'll be recognized that's not necessarily how it's gonna happen. So it's important to help promote the good work of other people on your team, um, especially people um, who are different than you. So really acknowledging that work and that's something that an ally can do and that I've often asked people to do. If they'll talk to me, talk to me about why haven't you been promoted yet or why aren't you getting these assignments, I don't, well, I don't know, well, it would be great if you would maybe send that message to my manager or to so-and-so. So make that suggestion to them. You can, do that, you can do that as an ally action on your own without having to be asked. But I've personally found that um, technique to be really effective in terms of getting allies to help me in my self-promotion. And also with negotiation. So it's often, it's, I think it's expected in technology that you're gonna negotiate salary. Um, but many women I've talked to that are new to the tech field do not negotiate their salary when they're coming in. Um, and what that means is that you start out behind and it's very, very hard to catch up. Um, so be more transparent about that negotiation and salary. And negotiation, I like to say everything is negotiable. So take negotiation even one step further than just salary in terms of job assignments or any you know, flexibility options um, or work that you do, volunteer work, all of those things are negotiable. Hours, working from home, anything that you would wanna do, anything can be negotiable and it doesn't have to be confrontational. So back to, I think, a similar thing I said when it comes to difficult situations where you can intervene, that doesn't have to be confrontational. I think a lot of women I've talked to think of negotiation as being confrontational or uncomfortable or something that they don't wanna do. I think just shifting that the way you think about negotiation in terms of coming to a solution that works for both parties, right? So it doesn't have to be win or lose, zero sum. Um, you're trying to come up with a solution that works for everyone. So really look at, um, normalizing self-promotion and negotiation. Those are two things that I've found to be the most, um, where I've seen most women come in at a disadvantage by not promoting themselves and not negotiating. So allies can step in and help in those cases. 
educate yourself about unconscious bias. Now, everyone has unconscious bias, and this is another one that I didn't think I had, um, but we all have bias. It's just part of being human. We take in too much information in our brains, and we have to categorize it in some way. And this, I think, what I like to bring this down to is mentoring. So mentoring can be really powerful, and mentoring someone different from you can be an effective way for you, not only to learn more about yourself and about other people, but for the mentee to also learn and hear about things from a different perspective. And often um, what, I get, what I hear from people is that they wanna mentor someone who's really similar to them, or they think it just ended up that way, um, or women will ask for a, a, a mentor who they want to be really similar to them. And um, from my personal experience, I've never had a woman mentor. Um, it's always been men, um, and you could say that's because that's who I had around me. I've, I haven't worked with a lot of women. Um, but uh, it's not something I ever thought about, and I did always learn quite a bit from the men who were taking a role in mentoring me. And also, when you think about mentoring, it doesn't have to be formal. So a lot of people who I think of as quote unquote mentors, we didn't have a conversation where I said, will you be my mentor? It was more you know, asking for feedback. So I think that's really important. Um, if you get asked for feedback, to be frank and offer feedback and not necessarily feedback about changing someone's behavior. Um, because again, going back to the diversity, we don't want everyone to be the same. So it's the different aspects and um, perspectives that people bring to the team that creates the better results um, that we want from diverse teams. So it's more about helping them to find their path than about trying to change them. Um, but giving feedback is important. I mean, that's really where I, where I came to see myself as being perceived in a certain way. Perception is reality. So being open to that feedback and hearing the different perspectives. Um, but informal, informal things like having a coffee, having a lunch. Um, I worked most of my career either traveling on the road or working from my house remotely. But I always took um, at least a couple times a month to either have coffee, have a phone conversation, have lunch um, with someone who I wasn't directly working with to really look for those opportunities to get feedback. So look at ways that you can offer that to people you work with um, as an ally action and, and look for ways to uncover your unconscious bias. Everyone has unconscious bias training these days. I've participated in it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but one of the um, best ways to uncover your unconscious bias is just by talking to people and then think about how, what, what is your response when you hear certain situations. And if you um, think about your response, um, especially if it's a situation that annoys you or gets to you in some way, think about, take a step back and relate to it in terms of what did the person actually say, uh, say or do versus what you're thinking about what they said or did? And if you actually relate what they actually said or did, sometimes you can uncover some of your own unconscious bias um, and be more aware of that. So it's not that you're gonna get rid of any bias because everyone has it. It's more just being aware of it and recognizing it when it comes up in yourself. Okay, slide number 10 I, is a little bit off the chart, but it says invite and encourage women speakers. Um, so um, when I talked about the visibility and influence um, that's important to succeed, obviously the network is important, so you know people who are referring you into promotions or new um, positions. Um, increasing visibility and expanding influence, um, public speaking is the best, the best way to do that. Um, and not everyone likes to do public speaking. That's actually, I think, feared more than death by the majority of humans on the planet. Um, and it's not easy to do, but it is a very effective way to increase your visibility and expand your influence. And it doesn't have to be in a, you know, a wide forum. It can be a small group like this. It could be even smaller. It could be five people in a lunchtime conversation. Um, but what's really important, and, and this goes back to, I, I think, the prove it and prove it again, oftentimes um, you need to be a little bit more suggestive to get um, women to come forward into this role. So don't just say that um, talks are open to everyone. Look at ways that you can invite and encourage people who are different um, to do the speaking. Um, so that might mean offering uh, to, do, to be a co-speaker. It might mean suggesting a topic for someone to speak about. Um, it might be actually setting up that forum um, where they can give their first talk. Um, but what I found is that once you get past that first 
hurdle of giving a talk, it gets more, it gets easier and easier, and then it just kind of spirals from there where people will just start getting more and more invitations and they'll become a more prominent speaker. Um, and that could be in, like I said, a variety of formats. Um, but what I've found most often, this is actually just a picture of me um, with my executive committee um, in there. That was a few years ago. I do have two other women now on the executive committee. Um, but, you know, look at it. Look at who your speakers are. Look at who's being um, brought into whatever conference you're doing or internal talks that you might be hosting. And make sure that you have a diverse um, lineup of speakers because um, that's going to help not only the speakers but the people who are listening to the talk because um, what I've gotten from feedback of people who come to my talks is how much they enjoy seeing someone who's similar to them speaking. It really helps them to feel like they belong. So that concludes my top 10 uh, tips. Um, these all might seem really simple and one of the feedback um, that I got from several different men when I've given this talk is that you could do this for anyone. You could do this for other men, and that's true. You can do this for any person on the planet, but obviously we all have limited time, so try to think actively about these 10 tips that I gave you and what you could do to actually encourage more diversity in either the team that you're working with in, or in um, conferences that you go to or in open source projects that you participate in to be more welcoming so you can get that um, diverse perspective. So I believe if each one of us were to do these things and to be actively looking for the, these actions that we can take rather than talking about them, we would actually become the change that we wish to see because I really do believe the majority of people in the technology industry do want to see change. Oftentimes they just don't know what to do or how to go about doing it. So what I encourage you to do is to act on one of these 10 tips today. Um, this is something I added um, after the fact from giving this talk many times and was feedback I got was like on social media, right? I can't think of anything I can do. Well, you can start with following more women on your social media feed. If you take a look at your social media feed, um, you might find that you're following a lot of people who are really similar to you. I've actually done this with several men that I work with and they've found that um, the majority of people that they're following um, are really similar to themselves. So um, try to seek out people who are different from you in terms of the um, social media um, news that you're taking in or, or, or social updates. If you can't think of anything to do, you can follow me on Twitter, that's Heather VC. On my Twitter feed, I actually have a list of women who Java, so if you look at my lists on my Twitter feed, you'd find many suggestions of people um, that you might be interested to hear from or that you could promote. So thanks for your time today. I think I left maybe 10 or so minutes for questions um, or comments or discussion. Like I said, this is not an easy topic to talk about and oftentimes people get discouraged because they don't get the credit that they think they deserve for this, but you really can make a difference um, just by doing some of these really small um, actions in your day-to-day -day life. So any comments or suggestions or feedback from the audience?